Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about record classes. Now Java is amazing but there are some complaints and one of the complaints is Java is very verbose. Now of course it makes Java more readable, in fact you can understand the well written Java code just by reading it without documentation. But the thing is there are certain places where we think hey this should be smaller. Of course you are doing a small thing but they have to write a lot of lines of code just to achieve that. And one of the example is data carrier classes. See what happens is once you start working on Java projects, there are certain scenarios where you create classes which are actually functional. Basically you will do processing there, it will be a service classes, utility class or a class which is doing basic, basically something. And then you will be having some classes which are only used for the data storage or maybe for data carrying purpose. Example, let's say you have a server here and you have a client. Now client says, hey, I want data. Now if that server is a Java server, of course in Java everything is object. So even if you want to represent that data which represents some object or something, it will be an object format. Let's say alien or the product or the laptop or the desktop. Now this is an object which will go from the server side from into a client side. So the only purpose of a class which is defining an object like this is to hold data. Of course, we are not going to change that data. That class is only used for data transfer or the object is only used for data transfer. So from the server side, you will convert into JSON. That JSON goes to the client and everyone is happy. Or maybe you want to get that data from a database. Of course, client needs a data. So client will ask for the server. Server will say, okay, I will give it to you. I will get it from the database. Now from database, it will be a row which will coming into a Java as an object and then from the object you will get the JSON. What we are focusing more on is that object. Now that object is immutable because we don't want to change it. Second, that object is only used for data storage. We are not using extra methods here. We can, but then that's not the intention of that. Now, if you want to create that particular object in Java or for the class, let's try to do that in this code. And then we'll move towards why record classes came into picture. So what I will do now is I have a very simple, simple code here. And in this, let me create a simple, very simple class here, which is called an alien. Normally, for me, alien means programmer, so I'm talking about you if you're watching this. So for me, you are alien, but again, that's a different story. But let's say we have a class here, which is alien, and then I want to have certain variables in this. Now, these variables, which hold data, we call them as states. Okay, so let's say we got int id, so every alien will have an id. And let's go for simple, two simple uh, variables here, which is id and name. So we'll have two things. And normally what you do is with whenever you have a class which is used to carry data, this is not a functional class. We're not going to do any processing here. It is just to work with these variables. And if you want to work with these variables, we need certain extra methods. Maybe you want to assign values. Uh, so one way to assign the values here is, of course, uh, we want to make it private because encapsulation. So make your variables private. And also we'll make it final because this is not going to change. So it's better to keep your variable final when you don't want to change it. Okay, and then I want to assign some values as well. Now, one of the way you can assign the value is you can use a constructor here. So let me right click and say generate. I want a constructor using which I can assign the value for both the variables and that's done. And sometime if you want to fetch this data, not sometime, but then if of course you want to fetch this data, right? So even if you want to convert that into JSON, you need to have the methods which will access it. So what we can do is we can say generate and I want getter. So normally we use getters met getter methods for both this variable. Okay, that's done. So basically we need a constructor, we need uh, two methods for fetching the values. In fact, imagine if you have 10 variables, you need 20 methods to get the values. Sorry, 10 methods to get the values. And then I will be, okay. Now there are two extra methods here. We'll talk about it in some time, but we got this, right? Now, if I want to create object, we can simply go back to the main method here and say, alien and I want my first object let's say a1 is equal to new alien and then you have to pass the values here so let's say the first alien is one and we got a name and okay let's go work with only one object as of now and then with this object you can actually fetch the values uh, let's say I want to print a1 dot get name uh, we can do that right so I can right click and run now we are able to fetch this data is because we have a get name method but what if you um, you want to print the entire object? Something like this. I want to print A1. Now what I'm expecting when, it, when I'm printing A1 is I want to print the values of the state or the variables in this case, which is 1 and Naveen. But unfortunately, if you run this code, you will get some hash value here or exact code. 
We don't want this. We want to get the values. In order to do that, what you can do is you have to override one of the methods, which is called to string. And then, of course, we have done that a lot in our, in our projects. So let's generate a to string method, which will print the value. So the moment you have this method, which is to string, and if you have this code now, uh, you can see it will print the values. So I'm printing A1, but it is printing these values. Okay, that's cool. Now what if you have two objects, let's say alien.a2, now we got different object here. And if I say new alien, and if I say two comma, let's say hush, now you can say we have these two different objects. And what if you have the same object? So when I say same object, I'm talking about the data. So let's say we have two different objects, but the values are same, right? And now, if you want to compare two objects, let's say I want to compare A1 and A2, of course, in the memory, there are two different objects, but they have the same value. So ultimately, I can say they are same, not with the memory location, but with the values. And the way you can compare them is by saying A1 dot equals. There's a, there's a method called equals in every object in Java. So we can say A1 dot equals with A2. And this should return true, right? Because they both are the same object or the same values. Run this code, it says false. The reason, they are not the same object. They are two different objects in two different memory location, but we are saying they are equal because, because of the values. Now we know that, Java doesn't know that. So what we can do is we can tell Java, hey, when I'm comparing, just compare the values. Don't compare the memory location or other stuff. Uh, the way you can do that is by overriding uh, equals and hash code method. So let's say next, I want for both the variables, both the variables, create, and you can see we got these two methods. Now what you're doing is you are changing the behavior of equals method. So you're comparing the values now, uh, run this code, and you can see we got true. Of course, if you don't know about equals and hash code, you can watch the video in the playlist. So I have the entire playlist on Java, you can watch that. But of course, what we're doing now is just to understand the record classes. So I'm assuming you know what is two string here. Uh, so two string basically prints the values, equals just compare the values instead of comparing the uh, memory location and stuff. So you can see how many things we have. So just to create a class, which will only hold data, we are creating so many methods. Now, do we have a solution for this? Uh, the answer is yes. What if I can just comment the entire section? How many lines we have here? Uh, okay, can we count the number of lines? It is starting from seven. It is ending at 45, approximately 40 lines. Can we just do that in two, three, or one line? Let's try. So in Java, if you want to represent a class which only holds data, basically a data carrier class, we can create something called a record. Okay, it's a record class. And just mention the class name, which is alien, record, record name, which is alien. And in the bracket, I know that sounds weird in a bit, but maybe if you know Kotlin language, it looks more familiar now. You can give a round bracket and you can mention int id comma string name. You can open the brackets and close the brackets. Done. 40 lines of code and one line of code, which is better. Of course, right? This is better. So this is what makes Java more readable. Of course, now you can also read it, right? So when you say record, it simply means it will have this component. So yeah, that they in record, we can say variables, instance variables as components. And these are basically your state variables. We can say state description, state variables. And yeah, this is how you do it. It's so simple, right? Now behind the scene, you got all the object. You can see in the main, I have not done any changes and there's no error. You got a constructor with two parameters. So what we are defining here is also a constructor, right? Look at this alien and the parameter with brackets. It's it, behind the scene, it is creating a constructor for you, which is a parameterized constructor. Now, since this constructor is based on the value you mentioned here, it is also called a canonical constructor. So yeah, this is how you can do it. It's, it's, it's so simple, right? And now what about equals? Let's try. Let me just run this code and you can see it says true. Okay, so by default, behind the scene, equals has been implemented. How about if I print the object itself? I want to print A1. Will it print the hexa code? Because you can see I have not written any two string method here. But what happens if I do that? Run, you got the values. So even two string method, it's already defined in this record. It's cool, right? Okay, now this looks awesome. In fact, there's one more advantage I will show you now. What if you want to change the behavior of a constructor? Can we do that? And can we use a default constructor? Let me try. I will say alien a3 is equal to new alien. And if I don't specify any parameter here, it will give me an error. 
The reason is you are saying we have two state very uh, two state description here, so we have to mention both. So by default, we don't have a default constructor inside our record. You can create if you want, because see, behind the scene, anyway, you have a constructor, right? So even if you don't mention, you implicitly get a constructor which is alien, which takes two parameters, int id and string name. And it is happening behind the scene, okay? You don't have to mention. This dot id is equal to id, and this dot name is equal to name. So this constructor is already there. You're just rewriting it, okay? It's not needed, it's there already. But if you want a default constructor, you can actually write it here. Not recommended, but if you create one, which is alien, and you can give a round bracket here. But you can see, uh, if you do that, it will give you error by saying, Okay, give me a hint. It says non-canonical record constructor must delegate to another constructor. So what it says is, if you want this to work, you need to call the another constructor, this constructor, and the, the way you can do that is by passing, your, you, you can call this method by passing some default values. I can say zero and empty string. Again, not a recommended way because it will, uh, if you create object like this, the default values that you will get is zero and empty string. Let me prove it to you. I will say A3 and run. You can see we got this output, which is, which is not a good way because the, the amazing thing is all the variables here in the record is by default final. What it means is you can't change it. How do we change it? We need set of methods, right? I can say A1 dot. You can see there is no set method. Now, since it is immutable, you can't change it. So you will say, what's the use of a variable which you can't change? And that's the idea, right? Because this particular object is created just to carry data. So why you have to change it? Once you create the object, just send it, right? And that's what we are doing here. But yes, if you, ha if you have that requirement, create a class, okay? For you, class is there. This is just for some use cases or most of the use cases where you don't want to change data. So by default, your variables are final. So it doesn't make sense to use your own constructor. But then you will say, hey, why do we have to recreate this constructor when it is giving you that? There might be one reason. The value which you are sending here, let me just remove this particular object here and let's make it one again. What if you want to send one and Naveen that should work. But if someone is sending zero, I don't want anyone's ID to be zero. So we can check that. So what we can do here is we can do some pre-check. So we can check if ID is equal to equal to zero. In this case, uh, just throw the exception. So we'll say throw illegal argument exception. And I can say ID cannot be zero. So you can throw the exception just like that. Okay, there's an error here. Oh, I forgot the new keyword. Now let's run this code. Now since I'm creating an object by passing zero, and you can see we got the error. This is what we wanted, right? ID cannot be zero. So yes, if you want to do some extra checking before creating the object, uh, you can do that in the constructor, just like that. Now, since we are saying that we should, you know, this should be more optimized, can we do this? There's one more way. So this, this constructor is actually called a canonical constructor because it has same parameters as defined in this state description here. So we can create something called a compact canonical constructor. I know the word sounds weird, but you will get used to it. So what you can do is you can actually say, don't mention the variables here. Any of those variables are coming from here, right? Why do you want to mention that? And don't need to mention this assignment as well. Assignment will be done automatically. You do, you do your checks, that's it. Let me just try it out. First, let's verify with normal entry. Let's say this is two this time and run and it works. You can see we got two Naveen. If you say zero, it should give you the error and we got the error, right? So it's so simple, right? We are just replacing all these lines just by writing whatever is required. Even if you don't need, you can just remove this checking as well, okay? Now, certain things to remember. First, all the variables here are actually private and final. Why final is because it's immutable data. So you don't have to mention that it is by default private and final. And the thing is, this record is actually a class. So behind the scenes, it's a class basically. And this class cannot extend any other class. So even if you have another class, let's say a book or a pen or a human, this class cannot extend that because the record class extends a record class. So there's an inbuilt class available. But yes, you can implement the interface as well. That's completely fine. Example, uh, if, you can imp if you want to implement, you can implement an interface, let's say clonable or maybe any other interface which you love. So you can inter implement the interfaces as many as you want. Okay, and of course you can define the methods as well. So you can actually create multiple methods here, uh, public void show, 
And if you want to do that, you can actually write multiple methods. You can create normal methods, you can create static methods, and you can create static variables as well. But what if you want to create an instance variable? Can we do that? So first, let me create a static variable. So I will say static int num, that works. But if you say int age, now this will give you an error. So if you want to create an instance variable, do that here itself in this declaration not there, okay? So that's one thing you have to remember. So when it comes to record, by default, every field is private final, and if you want to access them, you can do that with the help of, I mean, you can assign the value with the help of constructor, or uh, you can get the values with the help of methods. In fact, there's one more thing. Uh, let me just remove everything here. What if you want to fetch the value? Because in the earlier example, when we used a class, we were able to get, use get name. How about now? So if I say a1 dot, so we don't have a get name method. What you have is a name method. So whatever variable name you have, just use that and use a down bracket since we don't have a setter. So there's no confusion between get set, its name, which will give you the value. So yeah, that's about this record class. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comment section and let me know if you want to see the more features on uh, Java 17. So that's it from this video. Um, you can follow me on Instagram as well. You can find the handle here and do subscribe for further videos. Bye-bye.